Good noon time. <laughs> Good noon time. If you're Eastern Standard. Um, happy Tuesday. Monday. Oh, Monday. Oh, it's Monday. <laughs> Oh, Steve has, um, what is it called? Jury, jury duty. Jury duty. I've never had that, so I'm going to knock on some. Well, it's right Steve now. has jury duty. I'm out tomorrow for a wedding. So I cannot run all this by myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we decided we'd save everybody that trouble, and we're meeting yeah. today. So yeah. happy Monday. Yeah. I hope that you are having a beautiful and blessed start to your week. And we have some exciting things to share with you. I'm Patty. If I'm we haven't Carrie. Met Hi. Yeah. Um, I do have something real quick to say. So if you were on before we started, you might have seen Patty waltzing in. Um, our friend Cindy said, Patty must be excited. She's dancing. Well, we have a rule here that if once we get started, if you leave or come if back, you have to go yeah. check on something and come back, that you have to dance to get back in position. So if you don't want to dance, then you have to, you have to stay seated. <laughs> Yeah, today was a run in and out kind of day. Um, we are actually going to share with you um, some failures, things that didn't work, mm -hmm. things to avoid, how to fix, um, because it can't all be roses and sunshine when we're painting, DIYing, and crafting. So we are going to share the legit real goods with you today. and All things that we learned this morning. <laughs> all things, yeah. So because we switched days and last week was a three-day week, yeah. um, we got a little bit close to our like planning and when we do that, sometimes things can go south. But today the things didn't go south for any other reason other than things failed because of reasons we're going to share with you. Yeah. So there's a lot of weird things that all transpired, mm -hmm. and I think they're really good lessons, so I'm excited to share that. Same. So, Cindy, you're right. I am excited. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk real quick about some things about Studio R12. We are a stencil manufacturing company. We have 6,000-plus titles. Mm -hmm. We are based in the United States. We are woman and veteran-owned. And um, we have a lot of really cool stuff. And you can find us on studior12.com to do all of your shopping. And then we are on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and Twitch and Pinterest. Yes. I think. <laughs> is that all of them? I think, I that think there's all of them. more, but I don't think um, we regularly right. do them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many places to be today. But we do try to reach out where you guys are. Um, if you guys want to help other people that are DIYers and crafters, find us, then make sure that you share mm -hmm. um, because it tells YouTube, it helps other crafters when you guys are the ones doing the sharing. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, if my friend important. shares something, I'll check it out more than if I just see an ad. Yeah, 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 exactly. So we want to make sure that all the people can find the things. Yes, agreed. So last week on YouTube, <laughs> on Saturday, we released a really fun video with canvases and if you haven't seen our thumbnail over on our youtube channel you'll need to check it out so you can see what these canvases look like these before dollar tree. patty paint and they were dollar tree and they were very bright and obnoxious, obnoxious colors obnoxious, yeah and not something that we personally may have put in our home yeah. but now we painted them into something that yeah. would and how to redo something like that so these were little canvas frames and then we prime them and show you how to use, you can put any stencil on this, um, if any different combination of things. So keep that in mind when we're doing these lessons, um, it doesn't have to be painted in gray and white. It doesn't have to be painted in quilts. It doesn't have to be painted sure. with welcome. Mm -hmm. It can be whatever stencil you want. Steve's got something to say. And sure, you could buy plain canvases, but you're sure. spend quadruple the prices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, dollar twenty-five, guys. Mm -hmm. So this whole project was um, so dollar twenty-three, six dollars. That was my yeah. ching 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 one, brain. <laughs> one plain canvas. Yeah, exactly. So you know, you got one, you know, work of art that you could hang together or on its side mm -hmm. or just singly or whatever you want to do and make it into whatever colors, um, anything. But to do the canvases and have it just be a $6 investment, really great. Right. Well, speaking of plain canvases, I did want to bring one of the questions that was asked over on this video on YouTube yes. into this today. So we painted this on something that was already printed. And the question on our YouTube channel was, if you get a plain white canvas, do you still have to prime it like we primed these canvases? Yeah, so what I did to do these is I sprayed it with our flat gray primer. 
That is Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Ultra Cover, um, but it's flat and it's gray, to cover that artwork. Um, you, when you get something from like the Dollar Tree or any big box anywhere, even really at a garage sale, um, you just never know what's going to be under your paint. And so giving it something that will cover it up and cloak it is always good. So I choose a primer whenever I do that. But if you're on regular white canvas, go in with your paint and just have fun. And then with these, we also release this weekend a brand new coaster set. Because Ooh, one of the so reasons we, one of the things <clears throat> we wanted to do with the barn quilts was to paint coasters with them. So we released square coasters that have a base or not a base. And then we also released a set that has nine Coast, nine barn quilt stencils that you can In use set. on a set of coasters yeah. and you get a set of coasters as well. And so I'll share the link to that collection. Our coaster collection and our barn quilt collection are still on sale. <gasps> Since we're doing this on Monday, we Yay. have I know. dual sales yeah. going so on. Perfect. Yeah. And then um, once we get started talking about what's going on today, I'll also share the link for that collection. Now, real quick, do we want to show them what we're working on for this weekend? I kind of think that you guys are yeah. going to really love it. I um, think you guys, you need to know about this because it's, it's, yes. And it. So uh, last week I shared a quick video of a reel of Patty firebombing. We're firing, firing <laughs> and, on all cylinders. cylinders. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of people say, well, what are you going to do next? Like, well, stay tuned. And so this is your top board This side. is your top board This side. is how this comes from the lumber yard. Can you hear me okay? We hope. Okay, we'll move up. And then, ready, 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 ready. This is what it looks like when you fire it. Look at that grain. It's mm -hmm. amazing. It's so pretty. Like, look how beautiful that is. And then, I'm not going to tell you how I did it, but to make it look rich like this, I took one extra step. Mm -hmm. And you need to know what that step is. So you definitely need to see, this is Saturday, right? This is Saturday. This is coming up Saturday. And it's got so many great lessons. We're it's talking about sizing of stencils. Mm -hmm. We're talking about sizing of the These corners, corners. How guys, to corners. How to put the corners on. Yeah. We had several people when we were doing the corner tutorial that we did recently, several people said, well, put it on a porch sign. Well, we're going to. We're coming up. That's yeah. what we were waiting for. <clears throat> we actually made these for porch all, signs. All all of the corners they started as porch sign corners because that is such a beautiful effect it looks so architectural mm -hmm. it was so beautiful on a porch um it just just changes the look and well, i love that it's not like just a wreath right or just a football yeah you know or something like that i love that it's just got an elegance to it and if you look it's got one at the top and the bottom i don't know if you can see that and then one of the reasons that <clears throat> these corners are long on ones, like the reason they're kind of justified was because we built them for port signs. Yeah. And then we decided to do the other sizes as yeah. well. But and then they what's, were, what's neat is you can flip them on a square or rectangle and make them long which way and short which way or whatever. But on this, it will only work. We made them so that they would go... Yes. To yeah, the these edge. are 11 inches so that they will fit on these signs. Yeah, and I do want to say something about our sizing on our stencils. Let me put this over here. Um, can I just, because I didn't point it out, I don't think, the other day. I'm going to hope that holds for a second. This re ribbon rack, you guys, if you haven't seen the organization and what makes this special, we have had this like this, I think, it, has it been six months? Yes. I feel like it's been about... Um, this has worked. There's not one thing out of place. When you need a piece of ribbon and you need it to stay put, but you need to access all your ribbon at once, this thing is perfect. So go watch that video because it's amazing. <clears throat> we had someone comment that um, frame stencils would be cool. Yes, we yes. have some really good ideas that you guys recommended to us when we released the frames. Mm -hmm. However, be patient. Yeah. Um, these these frames were a, a, well, there's, not a long time in the process, but it's it's a process for us to release. There's styles times five. Re, no. Some, is it that way or the other way? Five times. I think, it, I, there were 40 yeah, products. That's a lot. 
Yeah, there were 40 new products yeah. that we released. And, and every every product, when you do a product, takes, you don't need to know, it takes a lot of It's a lot pieces, of hands. A lot of, <laughs> There's a lot a of, hands lot of workings and stuff like that. The stencil idea, I don't know whoever said that one though, it mm -hmm. never occurred to us yeah. to make those into stencils. It's coming. Um, so, but then we're all also excitingly in the middle of our um, fall and Christmas product development and mm -hmm. all of that. So that takes priority over stencils for corners yeah. because that was first and that keeps us on track for that. So that's a good thing. Oh, and on the sizing, I just wanted to say this confused me and I own a company that I own this company. Um, when we were looking at the coaster stencils, the coaster stencils, um, like a set of coasters is four inches, I believe. Is that accurate? I think mm -hmm. four inches is right. Yeah. Okay, so they're four inches and they're listed as a five inch stencil because we list it by the size of the outside of the mylar. And then if you go into our description, you will see that what the inside dimension is. And it's super important um, that we had some confusion that we didn't have four inch coaster sizes and we did the whole time, and um, that just caused a little bit of confusion. I just kind of like spaced out that we have the mylar size. So super important to read into, um, for any stencil or anything that you're buying, make sure you click down into that description and get the actual size because that's super helpful. Yeah, agreed. So um, just, because if it can confuse me and I own the company, then it can confuse you, so. Okay. All right, we're ready? I think we're good. Okay guys, let's talk about how paint a pot. <laughs> this was a lesson in how to paint a pot. Okay, so we're going to start with the failure, epic failure. Okay, Dollar Tree pots. One of the things when you're using a stencil, if you're doing anything bigger than just a little bit, then you can end up with, um, if your pot is tapered, like most flower pots are, then you can end up with a tracking problem. And there's a couple of things with this, but so we look for straight sides and these look like straight sided pots. They are not. And I will show you what that looks like. But um, this is a ultra cover also bonds to plastic and we've used it for plastic trays and those um, the, the plate charger things um, and stuff like that. We've used it a ton of times and it has worked brilliantly. So. I took a obnoxious red flower pot. It was like obnoxious like this one. They're the same, but just a different color. I wiped it off with vinegar, oh, not vinegar, um, alcohol to take any of the dust and any of that off. I let it dry completely, took it outside and sprayed. I did not sand it. Usually in the past I would sand, but then it makes a texture and I didn't want that. So since it's worked so well, but watch, this is what I call the scratch test. Okay, mm -hmm. epic, epic failure. Wah, wah, wah. Lottery ticket. Yeah, 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 it's basically you can make your own. Grab that. Yeah. Thank you. That is an amazing product. And I do believe since these are super flexible, super based in like no time whatsoever, if you weren't gonna scratch at it or do anything, it would be fine. Um, but because I was going to absolutely scratch at this, it, it was a problem. So this was my failure. And then, um, Oh, and I think that something to keep in mind when we're doing these is when you're working on a surface that maybe you haven't worked on before, do your testing along the way yeah. rather than just painting through it yeah. and then getting to the end and spending all this time working yeah. on your project and then, oh, it scratches. So can I say, um, so I've been painting and teaching painting for 35 years. Um, and what's interesting to me about this, I used to hold my breath. Um, kid you not, hold my breath. I would, I wanna be gentle with it because if I'm not gentle with it, maybe, maybe it won't scratch off. Well, the minute somebody picks it up and their fingerprints or their nails, like nails today, like there's crazy people with nails, but um, the minute something catches on that and it scrapes off your painting, it scrapes off your finish, you're, you're just toast. So it's better, I always, and I, I shouldn't do it this way, I always start my scratch test with the back of my finger, not digging my finger like that. I always start with the, the back because I'm afraid. 
Um, honestly, that's really what it's about. And what I really should do is just dig at it right away. And if it's going to come off with me going, then it's going to come off. So I know it's very. Imagine how bad your friends come to feel if they pick it up. And yeah. Scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Or your kids or your husband, you know, oh, your people don't let your people be the one to do the scratch test. You need to do that. And then, you know, it was, you know, 20 minutes total to go spray everything, to take it outside, move it back inside, let it air out and do a thing. Um, I wonder because of flexibility if this doesn't have some kind of silicone or something in it, some other plastic that doesn't like sticking to things. So that was one of our failures. And then in the process of this, let me show you a couple of things. So I want to talk about today we are working with this stencil and I really should, I should dissect this back out. And not there. We've got tape taping off things. This has got a built-in band. I'm going to lift it up, Steve. Hang on. I just have to brace it. Okay, so this has a built-in band on it. And so it has it at the top and the bottom. And so I just masked off that band because I didn't want it because this pot, if I was going to paint this pot, this pot has a nice lip on it. And then ultimately the pot I'm going to show you in a second had a nice lip on it too. So I didn't include the band. And interestingly enough, both of these things look fairly straight. Let me show you what happens when okay. I'm gonna glasses adjust. Okay, that's my line for Okay, so this, I don't, you're not going to be able to see this on here. Um, let me try a little bit of paper towel action. This is the pot that I'm going to show you stuff on because of this failure. Okay, that also looks extremely straight. This actually looks a lot more straight than this one. Okay. This is the line that I drew on this pot. I did a stop start mark. Yeah. So here to here. And you can see that this is straight paper and I rolled the pot and you could see that when I rolled it, I just was tracing right along as it rolled. And it's just a, an arch that's just kind of like that. It's not straight. And so how do you put a straight texture pattern on a curved pot? Okay, so this was the question. Um, that became the question. So when you do this, let me show you a couple of tricks. Okay. So number one, what I did is I took Mr. Flower Pot guy here. He's got a little clip on drip tray. I need to find a plot, uh, paint that will, or a, yeah, a paint or primer that will stick to this because I think that is a worthy little pot. It's just a lovely size um, for a buck twenty-five. It costs nothing. I really get mad that I have to spend thirty dollars oh on pots. Well, you spend two dollars and fifty cents on a plant, and yeah. then <laughs> and then all your money yeah. on pots. And I I have become. We had a uh, two ladies that um, owned a plant shop here in town, and they were our friends. And I ended up becoming a plant person. And I'm a garden person, but I didn't know I was a plant person, so the inside of my house looks like a greenhouse. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Okay, so anyway, what you can do with this is you can take and roll your um, pot along and mark. And this is, a good, this is not going to work this way. And you're going to see quickly what happens. It starts going downhill. If I marked the top, and I did test this, uh, my white ghost rider, you can mark on, ha, even the ghost rider peels the paint. <laughs> okay, so the ghost rider works on this one. Um, I did not test it on this one, but you can use your ghost rider on a pot that isn't bad, and you can mark where the beginning is, and when you get to that, and test your line. So if I was gonna paint this design from the top, then I would have to make some decisions. And so you can see immediately. Um, do we have overhead on this, Nick? Yeah. Okay. So you can see my second flower is like a half an inch out. Like, look at that. It's crazy. 
So you can see that this is definitely not a straight edge plant or a pot. pot. Okay, so what do we do about this? A um, couple of things. So what I did here was I marked, I marked right here with my black lead and then that's when I laid it down and I made my line that I showed you on the paper towel. Okay, and then I just rolled it and I discovered then it had an arch. It wasn't a significant arch. This, um, these little pots, was they were quite a bit more significant. Um, so that is a, a big deal. Um, so what I did was I started out laying my stencil out on my paper. Okay, so we got our paper. We're gonna be like, here's my stencil. And we got wet paint over here mixed up. And I can lay that down and I can be like, okay, here's my line. Here's my line. Make sure you do the same side on whatever place you mark, like outside right, not inside and outside. You know, make sure you do it the same. And then I did my pattern and then I just moved it along, lined it back up, and then I arched it slightly to see how far I'd be off. And then I wanted to know if they'd match at the end. So on this pot, it definitely did not match at the end. So I did this exercise with the actual pot itself. And so when I did it, I marked on it with the ghostwriter and then the, the eraser, click eraser, absolutely erased the line. So that was fine. And so then what I decided to do, I'm going to show you, there's another failure coming up. I'm going to show you the not failure one. We went and got another pot. Um, these were at Walmart um, for eight something, eight something. So nine bucks, you know, just a beautiful pot. I really love it. And it has a plug in the bottom as well, um, which I think is kind of fun. So this pattern would not repeat around. So what I did is I took my stencil, I laid it on one side, okay, and did my, this has got um, the joint compound, okay, so that's what that is got the joint compound on it, filled that in, and then I turned it completely around, so pretend like this is not painted, and then straight across, you could do yourself a little mark on the lip so that you could see, and you could even T-square or use a straight edge and mark straight across. And um, then I repeated my pattern, and then I did it halfway and then repeated my pattern, and then halfway and repeated my pattern. What I love, and if you can hear nothing else about painting flower pots than this, this is where you listen. You cannot see all of the sides of your flower pot at the same time. So whatever's on the opposite side is going to not be seen by the same person at the same time as they're seeing it on this side. If they wanted to take a tape measure and they wanted to do a ruler and they wanted to do a thing, they could. But they're but not going to be your friend anyway. They're not going to be your friend. <laughs> don't don't hang out with people like that. You don't like those people. Yeah. So, yeah, see ya. Not, not Bye, even going to do it. Yeah, Steve's like, I'm out. I'm going to measure. Um, anyway, but you can't see all the sides at the same time. And then this is white on terracotta. And so white on terracotta is going to obviously be super visible, but we're about to change that. And that is... The lesson today is how you would take this raised stucco look and then accessorize your pot. So that's actually where we're going. I just want to show you the failures before we get there. Okay, you're going to go way over there. Is that in the way? Okay. And so let's talk about failures again. Okay. So this pot was this kind of light, dusty color, and this is actually darker than the outside was, and we took a picture of it before. It's a really pretty um, pattern on it. I, I do like that, but we're going to paint over it. Um, this was my first attempt, and we were using our favorite Liquitex um, matte gel, and we were doing that to make this effect, and I had not sealed this, and the gel started seeping into the terracotta because it was unglazed, and so that was a failure point. So then we took the DecoArt multi-purpose sealer, and we sealed the outside of the pot to keep anything from seeping. And so now I'm going to show you how I would fix this. Okay, so it 
it just, all the lines just kind of got muddy and it wasn't raised as much as I wanted. And you know, it was like a lot of different things went on. So we're gonna use the joint compound. I'm going to bring up my friend, the little bench, move some things out of the way. And I'm gonna show you how I would fix that. So we're gonna get this. When I was doing this, I was absolutely doing this on top of this because um, if I put my mud, if you will, my joint compound on this side, and then I flip it over to this side to do the opposite side, it's going to be wet on that side and I'm gonna mush it. So I have to have some drying time on this and pots tend to take a little bit longer than wood to dry. So I didn't want to take, you know, two days of drying time to do this and I don't think you would either. So if I get it up here at eye level, then I can paint this side, flip it around, make sure that I'm opposite, paint this side, and then do my other two sides. Okay, so that's how I did that. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna step over. <clears throat> so I've got my stencil, got my joint compound. When I move over here, we, my sound might get a little bit weird. So I'm gonna take the joint compound and I'm going to we'll move him over here. I've got a palette knife. You could use a credit card. Um, use an expired credit card. Don't use your library card. You need that. If you're on video, don't show the numbers. Yeah, yeah. If you're on video, please don't show your numbers. Okay. So we're going to come over here. Nick, how's that sound? Um, we're not sounding right now because I'm going to retake. Sorry. Way easier if you have your band taped. And the um, stencil that Patty's using is a banding pattern stencil. And we have a whole collection of these. And They're they are, amazing. They, I just yeah. marked them down. You guys, these are incredible. You can use them as borders. You can use them as just a pattern. You can use them on your deck. You can use them on your flower pots. You can use them on all the things. They are all of, uh, they're just amazing patterns. Okay. All right, how's that sound over here? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. You feel good about that, Nick? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right, so luckily my stencil is exactly the height of the lower band. That was very, very wonderful. So I'm gonna lay that there and then I'm gonna check this one and this one to make sure that they both show a little bit of the base. And then I'm going to, yeah, I use this quite a bit. I need like eight. I'm going to go to the next one over because I don't think I use it as much. And that tape was holding it nicely. I think it's worthy to go ahead and replace this tape because if it doesn't hold up there, I'm going to be like five, five hand patty. <laughs> it's ugly. Yeah. So we're just going to peel this tape off. So when you stick and re-stick and stick and re-stick and stick and re-stick, um, especially on something like a flower pot, um, it will make your tape not stick anymore. So it was nice to have that tape sticking and I could just peel off some and do it, but I'm just going to go ahead and re-tape. I hope that you're liking the sharing of things that didn't work because I feel like that's helpful. And if I could make all these mistakes, and I guess I didn't make mistakes, but if we can have these errors happen um, and 35 years of painting and teaching and being professional and writing magazine articles and books and things like that, then it can happen to you as well. So that's why I think it's so valuable. All right, so we're gonna come over here, not fall off. Okay, we're gonna line it up. Let the tape stick. And see, that's another piece of it is I stuck, restuck, moved, restuck again. So, um, like I repositioned over and over again. Okay, so now we're just going to stucco that. And if you want it really high, and notice I got just a little bit, I ghosted myself. 
If you've got it a little bit on another spot, I'll show you how to take that off. You can make it smooth. And this, incidentally, would be what you would do if you were doing a cake. Um, the same kind of effect. The cake with the little lazy Susan under them yeah. is oh, epic. Oh, I know. Those videos are great. Yeah. That makes me happy. But this, is, this would be phenomenal. If you know a cake decorator that uses stencils for airbrushing and stuff like that, this, these stencils would be the thing to do. Oh, yeah. And we actually, um, someone just commented a little bit ago that said that they use stencils for baking. And we have a new cookie shop opening in town. And I was talking to the owner the other day that if they needed some stencils that yeah. we could try to help them work some stuff out to see what works with their designs that yeah. they're doing. So we are exciting. always so excited when we have a business open. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I would do with my stencil and um, the stuff. So I'm going to peel it off here. Okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay. So ready? So I'm going to peel it off. So what I did was I went right over the failed seepage media thing, okay? If I had been sealed, I don't think I'd have had that same problem. Now I'm going to pull this down because that side's going to be wet now. And I want to show you how you clean your stencil. So now you'll go here. I'm going to lay it on a paper towel. Take another paper towel. I've got just a single sheet, so we're not being super wasteful. And I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to wipe it off again. And now you're going to see I have quite a bit of medium still on my paper towel. I'm going to fold that over. White on white. I know. I know. Okay, so now I'm going to take the clean part of my paper towel and I'm going to clean off the back side. I would absolutely, the minute I got done painting with this, um, not tomorrow, not four hours from now, like immediately, I would take that to my sink and I would make sure to go ahead and wash that off. We have a how to clean your stencils video. That would be very, very practical for you to know about in this case. So that's how you get the medium on your pot. Now let's talk about how you paint your pot. And then what the, why you would want to have raised texture. I also just shared the link for the playlist mm. for our um, raised texture videos. We've oh, done yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is something that if you haven't done, if maybe you're a little nervous to do it, try it out on cardboard. Cardboard is your um, friend. I practice every time before I do it. Mm -hmm. I never just do it straight on the, on the project. I'm not going to talk about that. I mean, this is why we're opposites. This is why. <laughs> I'm good about barging in, and she's good about planning, and the, both of those things are fabulous things. Okay, this is a Dollar Tree towel. We don't care what color it is. We don't care that it says relax. We care that it's a towel we don't care about. And so what is great about having a towel is if you are painting a project, this is such an epically good trick. You guys need one of these in your toolkit. If I am, pretend like I'm painting this book. Pretend like I've spattered or something like that. If I'm painting this book, this is holding it very firm. I can, instead of moving the book around, I can move my towel around and then the, the book doesn't sit on any spatters that happen. The book can change its direction so now I can shade the moon or make some grass or you know paint a word or whatever the thing is that I'm doing on this book but it's not moving through anything that I'm doing on this towel. And then this pot is round. And so how do you keep a round thing from moving around? I can make it roll, but if it was on this hard table, it would go really fast. And if I needed to, I could make it not roll. So this becomes a really good holding device. And once again, I can change its direction. So I have mixed up some paint and it has been about an hour since I mixed up that paint. So I'm gonna show you how we would base this and do some fun things on it. Okay, so 
we are going to sponge that on. Ooh, I feel like I matched that pretty well. It is, and I'll tell you guys the colors for this. We'll have it in the description later. 79, 44, 9, and 40. Hut, hut. <laughs> okay, so you would mush the paint into all the cracks and crevices. And what I love about this, I'm going to get one more area done and I'm going to show you. So I'm really, really using my um, sponge as a dauber. So I'm really just mushing and smushing. Okay. So when we look at that and we see just that texture, that in itself is kind of pretty, right? So we'll go with that. It's kind of a pretty little thing. I'm going to go ahead and make this upper area just into a basic terracotta color. I do love those swirls. And I will go ahead, change my towel position. Um, Carrie teaches yoga, and when I just said change your towel position, I feel like it was like a yoga phrase. <laughs> I don't think that's what I've used. Nope. I'll have to, I'll have to sneak it in. To change that towel position. I, you use towels, though, so you can change your towel some, position. Some people do, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll just kind of mask out some of the upper so everything matches. I just want that all to be matchy-matchy, which does not sound like me at all. Definitely a texture girl. How many of you love texture? Okay, so we'll get that all kind of based in. Okay, so now that part is all blended. Oops. And now you can see that my towel has gotten some gunk on it. So what we'll do is we'll just flip that towel over. When I'm done with this project, this will go into the, into the wash. This will harden because it's paint. Um, if you get it fresh and you want to just put it in a sink with water, it'll rinse out. If your paint hasn't dried yet, um, that will happen. But if you feel like that's something that's going to happen um, and you, you want another towel, go have a couple of these as backups. Okay, so I'm going to blow dry this for a hot second and I'm sorry about the noise. Okay. We're drying everything. So with the pot and being 360 painted, I'm fighting a couple of battles at the same time. Number one, I'm fighting the, my paint is wet on the opposite side. Um, number two, um, you have a joint compound. You want to make sure that um, it's something that you can paint over without it being sealed. Thankfully, most paint has sealer in it. Most acrylic paint has sealer in it. So. I'm using this as um, a, basically a paint and a sealer. Okay, so now I want to show a couple of techniques. We've been playing around with um, the different, um, these are the wood stains from Minwax. If you haven't seen those videos, they are in last week's live, I think. And um, well, so that's going to be um, May 2023, I think. Was that, we were still in May last week, right? Yeah. I'm super self-employed, which means that I never look at the day of the week. And I tried to come to work yesterday, you guys. It was Sunday. I woke up and I was like, wait, I didn't go to church yesterday. What is going on? It blew my own hippie noodle. Okay, 
So what you can do is this is a stain. This is Wedgwood number 12. Oh, Hedgewood, sorry, good call. Wedgwood. Uh, Wedgwood's a blue. Um, but anyway, it's 12.06. Um, and then you can take your couple tools. Take my big oval glaze. And then I can go in. Now this is going to do a couple of things. It's going to grab in places and stuff like that. But I want to show you what happens in the raised area. Okay, so I'm going to go in this. I'm just going to scumble this. So this is a water-based stain. So if I dip in water, and I've only got dirty water, so we're going to get forgiveness on that one. So when you go over there, now it enhances the effect that I did. That's extremely satisfying. It is. It's so isn't that neat? Okay, so now you can't see it here, but you can see it here. Okay, now I'm going to dry that real quick so that it doesn't pull off when I do the next step. What you can do is you can take your same brush that we're going to dip in there and try to clean off. Damp out all of the water, blot it off. And now we're going to go into the white, also sealed. If you watch the, um, when you get these honey bottles, they have a, this seal is inside the lid and you cannot, you can dig it out with a knife, but that seems like too much work. Anyway, it totally seals down to the lid of the paint jar when you put it on the first time. And these are brand new colors that I got a couple weeks ago. So they all of them have them. I just haven't gotten to all of them and used them. So we'll put a little bit of the white out. And I think I might go with my foam brush. And now we can go on the tips of things and we can just kind of dry brush down. Okay, now I'm getting a little sloppy, so you can see it on other areas, but because it's the water-based, I can go in and I can erase. So now I've got this really just highlighted terracotta effect and that is that is the entire thing I wanted to bring to you this week, is how to use a raised um, medium joint compound in your stencil and then be able to give it this beautiful raised effect and make some detail with it. Whew, that was a long journey. We're not done. <laughs> okay, we're not done. I know we're not done, but I think I might be. <laughs> <laughs> no, that looks fabulous, though. We have a lot of people saying, super oh my fun. gosh, I love it. Yeah, super um, fun effect. You guys, it's really actually easy if you know what your substrate is, if you're yeah. not trying to do all the things that way. Like, if I knew terracotta, blah. Anyway, that's so, why we shared. Most of the questions that I have kept for this are on sealing. Okay. So Brenda asked, how do you, or Peg asked, how do you seal after you paint? Okay, that's a wonderful question. Okay, so after you paint the after pot? You get, after you get the pot painted, okay. how would you seal it? Well, so pot? I would, pro easiest would be to spray. I really don't like to spray though, because I really don't like um, whatever those chemicals are in the spray. You could totally take the foam brush and paint right over the top of it and just watch for any running that comes through because of your um, raised areas. Mm -hmm. So just keep an eye on it and smooth it out. Um, you could also, actually, you know what might be the best idea? Is to take these little guys. We have been talking about these little guys for like a couple of weeks running, I think. Um, they're the dollar fifty seven mm -hmm. or something right. like that. They're yeah. super a um, dollar fifty nine. Dollar fifty nine. We are currently out of stock of them, yeah, but because that's we because about we them. talked about yeah. them last week and sold out immediately. Yeah, yeah. You guys, we talk about these all the time. Um, they're on their way back in. So one of the things that happens um, is 
when we talk about things, sometimes like right now, I didn't know I was going to talk about this because you asked a great question. Mm -hmm. And so that makes me think. And then I go through my tool arsenal in my head and then I come up with an answer. Then we talk about it and then everybody goes and tries to order it and then we end up in a mess. So that's why that happens. And I don't know what we can do to fix that other than carrying a million tons yeah. of, we're a small business, you know, whatever. Okay. If I was using this, um, and it really does, I love this because notice everything's dome with us. It is. Dome is the magic. Notice that's a dome shape edge to that dome shape to our dome brush. It's amazing. Well, when so, you're around, aren't you? I Patty, am around. Patty likes round, yeah. pref prefers round surfaces to square. There's round a decor. wonderful home de decorator that wrote a bunch of books called Alexandra Stoddard. S-T-O-D-D-A-R-D. -D -D. I highly recommend these books if you're into decor. She's got like principles of decor. And she said that everybody has a shape, she, mm -hmm. shape to her, their heart. And um, you'll know by looking at your furniture, your cars, things you lean to. I spent um, 12 years living in our house in Portland trying to soften the corners of the rooms. I would like to point out... Classic round syndrome right here, <laughs> right here. Trying to soften that square shape that is in the corner. I'm always about that. So I am classically heart um, shape is yeah. a round or an oval. And that is just who I am. And then I had a really good friend, Mary Jo, who was absolutely a square. And I don't mean that as her personality, but my goodness, she loved everything she loved buildings and rectangles and squares, and mm -hmm. she was just all about that. And, yeah, so if you notice that about yourself, don't fight it. <laughs> Embrace it. Because I fought that for years. I had no idea I was doing it until I read that book. It was amazing. Okay, so this has got a round shape. So what you're going to do with this little guy, he's super reusable over and over. And, and if you do anything silly, like leave it to soak... Pick it off. If it's got any hard crusties, pick it off. Shave it with a little shavy thing like you do the sweaters, you know. But um, wash your stuff. Take good care of your brushes. You're spending money on them. Keep them submerged in water so that they don't do what happened here. He's got a crust right there. Anyway, so into the water. Squeeze it out. Okay. Put my varnish on the, on the palette. And then I'm going to blot that. And then I'm going to do this through my raised area. I'm just going to press that in, reload. Because it's wet, it's going to keep it even. And then I can smooth it out to the other areas. But because it's wet, it's going to help it blend. And that is the perfect way to apply uh, varnish to something that is um, textured. Okay. So when you are sealing, mm -hmm. do you seal the inside? Um, you know, I did it on this case. Um, and I, I don't know. I think you guys need to tell me the answer to this if you've done this before. So when I use pots at my house, notice there was an S on the end of that one. <laughs> totally legit good reasoning there to have the S on the end of it because I don't. But anyway, but if I had a new pot that I was using and I put a plant in there, I usually put a pot in a pot. Yes. And so I don't tend to put my dirt into the pot and then have, you know, the thing growing or whatever, because I love to take out the cheap black plastic thing and then repot up. Um, so I don't know the answer yeah, to that. I think because it's probably this wouldn't be personal need to, yeah. if you're just going to put another pot in yeah. the pot. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you can count how many times we said pot. <laughs> Okay, one yeah. more. Okay. How long do you wait to seal this? Um, Just until to it's, varnish it? To, yeah, to yeah. seal it. Um, as soon as your stuff is dry. Yeah, yeah I think the longest the longest time to wait is going to be when you do your raised texture. Yeah. And that you'll want to be very dry before mm -hmm. you do anything over it. And yeah. then after that, it's just going to be just like a normal project. When yeah, you're and dry. really, if you don't varnish inside right away... And say your joint compound wasn't completely cured and you did your varnish over it and it seemed like it took okay, 
you're going to be able to absorb out from the inside, if that makes sense. Like, so if something's going to be weepish, um, then it can weep to the inside. You haven't blocked its path and then it'll dry and cure and do all of those things. Um, so if I was going to varnish the inside or seal it, I might seal it like next week after I've done the outside and do all of that and then go ahead and give it a coat inside. If I was going to do the inside, I would absolutely do at least two coats. Um, and I would use two coats of sealer just to, okay. just to block it. Um, I think that would be wise. And then um, the stepping stone videos. Um, those videos, we make what we call a paint sandwich. Um, and so watch those for seeing about how to keep the weather from coming into your painted pieces. Um, that's super valid. Okay, that was all my questions all right. about sealing. I love it, you guys. I'm so glad that you joined us. Um, we enjoyed showing you how many ways there are to um, figure out how to paint a pot. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you give us a little heart and a hug, and we'll see you on Tuesday next week.